Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Duran. We are getting a lot of requests from our Alpha 7 students to create a TOS tutorial fit for an Alpha 7 trader. Today I'll go over how to set up charts for different screen sizes as well as configuring the rifle charts. I'll then also provide a setup style suited for two or more screens. So let's begin. Now in the beginning when you first open up Thinkorswim, you'll have a big box here. Uh, you could just click X and then this will be open for viewing. And as you can see we have uh, some market watch, watch list, we have uh, activity and positions, all right, it's a brand new account. All right, so you're not going to see any data. Now, the first thing you want to do is you're going to want to go to the bottom of the corner of the screen, right next to the plus sign, and you're going to click it to remove this sidebar or ribbon. Okay. Now, we're going to move to the charts tab. Now, as I said, it all depends on what type of screen size you have. If you have a 15 inch or a 17 inch, it may be a little bit more difficult for you in order to be able to take advantage of Thinkorswim and also uh, uh, the, the different time frames that you'll need in order to trade sufficiently with the Alpha 7 strategies. So if you do have a 15 inch or 17 inch, I'd advise to get a bigger screen. Until then, what I want you to do is I want you to click on this yellow transparent box on the right top. Now, this basically signifies how many charts do you want here. So, for someone who has a, a 15 inch or 17 inch, you may want to go to 3 by 2, okay, which is 3 across, 1 down, or sometimes you can't even fit that much data that you're just going to have to do 3 across and that's it. Uh, but you can play around with it, it's fine, it's not that important right now. So for now, I'll go with the standard on a 24-inch screen. I'm going to do 4 by 2, which is 4 across and 1 down. And when I click that, we'll see 8 charts pop up, 4 on top and 4 on bottom. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to link each chart. Okay. So we're right next to the ticker box, you're going to see a red, yellow, blue uh, icon. We're going to click it and we're going to choose red only on the top. That way we link the charts to the top. And then if we go to the bottom, we'll make it yellow so that way the bottom charts link to each other. Next thing I'm going to do is put in a stock. I'll just put something uh, basic Facebook and then we'll put spy. Okay. Now, before we move forward, there is one thing I want to let you know. These boxes can be moved and stretched. If you see, you'll receive a double-headed arrow right here. You could click, left mouse click it, drag it, the other way as well. And not only that, but you could also do up and down as well. All right, so just make sure you have that double-headed arrow and you should be fine. The next thing I want you to do before changing the time frames is right click on the top left chart. We're going to set up the rifle charts now. We're going to right click on the price, uh, not on the price action because if you right click on the price action you'll get a different menu box. If you right click in the background then you should go to studies and then edit studies. From here we'll have a top on the top left somewhere where you could type in the beginning letters of each type of indicator we need. So the first one we're going to go for is simple moving average. So I'll type in SIM. There we go. And now we need three of these so we'll double click three times. On the right side of each banner of the simple moving average we have uh, uh, almost like a, a screw or a, a bolt. So what you're going to do is you're going to click it. You're going to change the first one to five. The next one, you're going to change it to 15, and make sure you change the color, right? You want to make sure that the colors uh, are different so that you have good contrast even when they overlap. So we'll make uh, the 15 red. And then the 200, doesn't really matter much, uh, 
most of the time on the water time frames they won't be near your price and we'll just make this blue as well since it's far away all right but you could do whatever you'd like the next thing we're going to add are Bollinger Bands so B-O-L-L -L. pick the original one Bollinger Bands double click now what's neat is that the numbers or the criteria that we need is already built in defaulted the only thing I'd advise you to change is to change the lower band and the upper band to be the same color so let's make it red okay that way we don't have too many colors going on in the chart and we're gonna erase that and we're gonna type S T O C H at that point you should be able to find stochastic full that's the one you want we're gonna double click it we're gonna do like we did before we're going to change the K period to 15 and the D period to 5. Now, the full K and full D are very dark colors, both of them. I would suggest that you get one dark, one light, so that way you could see when they overlap. So I'll keep red and I'll make it uh, baby blue or ice blue, whatever that color really is. And we should be good. So we're going to click Apply. And we're going to click OK. Now there's one few more tr uh, uh, changes I need you to do. As you can see, volume and stochastic is taking a lot of space. So we're going to right click on the chart again. We're going to go to Style now, and then Settings. When you open it up, the first thing you want to do is click Overlap Volume, or check Overlap Volume. This way, the volume will show up in the price action area. One neat tool that you could do is add cr synchronized crosshair position and that means that all the crosshairs if you put your mouse here then the crosshair will show everywhere else the same data point the same time where that crosshair is on all the other charts so it saves you a lot of time in uh, looking at different places. The next thing we want to do is go to the time axis tab and click time zoom Okay. At that point, click Apply, and we'll click OK. Now what Keep Time Zoom does is it allows us to not have to always zoom in when you change the stock. You see? So make sure you keep Time Zoom, because once you keep Time Zoom, then it won't change. Okay? See? Now that we have that set up, the next thing we want to do is right-click one more time on the chart, we're going to go to style, we're going to go to save style, and we're going to type in rifle or whatever you'd like, and then check include patterns and study set. Now I already have it, so I'll just make rifle 5. All right. Now that we have it saved, I'm going to go to the other charts now, right click on the, pri on the ba background of the chart, we're going to go to style, load style, and we're going to do rifle. And we're going to do it again. Style, load style, rifle. Style, load style, rifle. Makes it a little bit quicker and soon you won't ever have to worry about doing this again unless you want to make another uh, chart area for another screen you have. Uh, it's also pretty simple. Okay. Okay. Now we have the style loaded on each chart. So we're going to zoom into each one. Now there's two ways to zoom in. You can either left click on your mouse and hold it and drag it all the way to the right and let go. Or on the bottom of each chart, you have a plus and minus magnifying glass. Now be sure when you use this strategy, to always move it all the way to the right. Otherwise, you're going to be skipping some present data and you're not going to know that you're actually behind. So always make sure the scroll bar is to the right. So let's do that here. For me, I got pretty used to uh, just zooming in like this. It's pretty quick once you get the hang of it. Okay. All right. So here we go. We have a nice setup here. This one's a little too zoomed in. There you go. 
Now the next thing we want to do is change the time frame. So there's two ways to change the time frames. Here, you can see it says D. If you click here, you can have all the different presets of different time intervals. However, sometimes if your screen is too small, you're not going to be able to see this. So what I'd like you to do, okay, is I'd like you to click, right click here, or you can go to style, or right click here, on the, chart, on the background of the chart, then go to style, go to intraday, two days, then one minute, then five minute, then 15 minute, then 60 minute, okay? And then you could do the daily, one year, or two years daily, all right? So let's move in one minute, five minute, so now I'm just fixing the times, so that way everything is aligned. Alrighty, I'm going to move this back so you can see some normal data while we're working with Thinkorswim. Now that we have the time set up, we have the spy set up on the bottom, we want to add one more thing, because not everybody has two screens. So what I want you to do is on the right, on the last chart on top, the hourly chart, you should see a sidebar, like here. If you don't see it, then you're going to need to drag until you do see it. So we're going to click TRD right here, the first one. And right next to buy market, there's a blue arrow. Click the blue arrow and then check auto send. This way you don't always have to go through those annoying confirmations when you send out a trade. Then we're going to click Obviously, quantity you could change here. Then what we'll do is you click buy market to buy long, sell market to sell. If you click sell market without having an open position on that certain stock, then you're going to be shorting. And then you just press buy market again to cover. At this point, we have everything set up for a one screen Alpha 7 student. The only thing you need to know is monitor here. You can see your trades, your filled orders, whatever they may be. And the last thing we need you to do is click Setup on the top right hand corner. You're going to go to Save Workspace As. You're going to type in whatever you'd like. You're going to click Save and for now on you could always go here and go to your saved screens. Okay. Now last thing that I'm going to talk about is how to make two screens. And it's very simple. Right next to the yellow transparent box, you have another circle here uh, that looks like a list with a bunch of bullets. So we're going to click that. Right next to it, you're going to see detach under reset. You're going to click detach. So another screen popped up on my other monitor. I'm going to drag it into this screen. And what I do for this screen is for the next screen is I don't need another all spies and all one minute five minute 15 minute hourly I already have a nice cockpit right here with everything I need to see what lurks beneath however what I'm gonna do here quickly I'll show you is I'll add a five by two I'll add another stock I'm gonna unlink them Unlink all of them. And after unlinking them, you're going to change all of them to different stocks. And also make them one minute, all of them. So one minute, one minute. Now you're going to have to just go to style, load style, rifle, style, load style, rifle for the new charts, right? Make it one minute. Almost done. Now that we have one minute on all of them, we're going to change the stock. So Facebook, Twitter, Guild, GPro. Okay, what do we have? LVS, VA, Tesla, uh, Google, um, FSLR. And Johnson and Johnson, for argument's sake. All right. Now that we have different 
charts, all one minute, we have a visual watch list for your 10 most favorite reactive stocks that are occurring right now. Okay? This I put to the side. Now what I do is if I see something on the one minute, on any of these charts with a Alpha 7 setup, I then automatically move it here to look a little bit deeper with the wider time frames and match them with the spies. At that point, I'll be able to make a, a more educated decision on whether this is a setup that looks viable or it looks like there's some divergence or apathetic correlation to the market in which it doesn't look like it's ready to make any sort of move that we're interested in. So there it is, guys. I hope you enjoy it. Please leave me your comments. Uh, any type of suggestions, I'm more than happy to continue moving forward and helping you guys, making some recorded sessions uh, to help you guys out. So want to thank you guys and have a good day. Bye.